It's part five of our conversation with Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. Uh, Jeffrey Kroger asked, any chance for an expanded edition of Bursting Out? Well, that was just literally, there were, that, that, that was a concert tour that was recorded live on stage. So there isn't really anything we can expand upon because it was simply, um, it was recorded every night on 8-track, both uh, concerts that I think took place in the USA and in Europe. And I then went through all these 8-track tapes to... Uh, you know, pick performances that seem to me uh, the best. And a lot of razor blades, a lot of tape, and um, um, and I, even to this day, I really have no way of knowing what was recorded where. You know, the bulk of it was recorded somewhere. I rather seem to remember, but um, it was. Um, it, it, it the concerts certainly were taken from a number of places. It was. Um, and it was just that live show, you know, there was nothing, it was the same every night, basically the same songs, and for, for a, a period of touring, that was it, it was it was literally just what we did on stage every night, so sure there are various other, or there were a whole, a whole load of eight-track tapes, I don't believe they exist any longer, because they would have been yeah. um, edited onto one reel, which two reels, which would have been the compiled multi-tracks that were then used to, to mix from. Um, and I'm sure the rest of the tapes, you know, were trashed. Oh. So uh, there's nothing to expand upon. But Broadsword and the Beast next year, that, that has a vast amount of material because it has uh, a lot of work that was begun in 1981 and continued into 1982. Um, so there is something, you know, probably 20 songs or more maybe 25 songs and and the, the amount of stuff we have recently found is um probably makes it the biggest box set and a lot of that material some some of it has been released on best sorts and compilations subsequently but there are i mean i, I hate i hate to, i mean i've got them all sitting here i mean there's probably what are there there's the 32 pieces which includes things that have been released before but many of these are demos and and then there's another 10 here so there's probably 42 songs i guess you could probably say that at least 25 to 30 of them are either versions of songs that have never been heard before or they are in a in in a few cases things no one will have heard before because they only came out of the um, the dusty tape vaults. That's crazy. Week. That's a lot of music. Well, it's a, it is, and it's a, it's, it is, I mean, ultimately you are constricted by what it is you can physically fit onto the, the media that you're selling. Right. And at what price point, because, you know, you can say, oh, well, let's, let's stick another CD in the box, but you know, it does cost money, and it has to be passed on in terms of the overall costs. And so, we were trying to keep the thing, the right balance of being a lavish presentation, but not pushing it out the, out of the, um, you know, pushing it off the shelves because it's simply too expensive or, or overwhelmingly complicated and people don't know where to begin. I think you've got to find the right balance. So um, I jokingly said to Warners today, I said, when we come to getting a working title for, we usually give these box sets to Make, make people aware that this is a different product to the original album. They usually have a subtitle, which is, in the case of most of the box sets, <clears throat> something that's sort of vaguely um, in keeping with, but, you know, perhaps a slightly clever, I mean, like Heavy Horses, it was the New Shoes edition, you know, the horseshoes. Um, and I jokingly said, well, we should call it we could just call it the broadsword sessions because it's all that stuff that preceded the actual block of work that we did to, to do the final tracks that appeared on the album. But I said, how about calling it instead of the broadsword and the beast, why don't we call it the, the broadsword and the rest, <laughs> <laughs> which um, is the rest of all that material that was never, uh, that never seen the light of day. And, uh, 
So we uh, we will we will be working on that. Stephen Wilson is remixing it. Um, isn't able to start work until much later this year on that project. But it is it is for 2022, being the 40th anniversary yeah. of, of that album. Well, how do you feel? A particularly popular album in the USA, so you should forget everything that I've said during the last seven and a half minutes. 